Gavin, Le Kathleen Maud, Anvi May, Anvi Alta, Asna Chokrasa, a will clue August Carl Emmer Skave. Krin, Krinta Nakula Tra, Lemagor. Achanish, Liam Shias, August Bratnim Tri Lahul, Eron Gran Einroch Shinhal, Pagna Keta Dinna, Chulila, Yenach Rudder Bidum, Ach, May Liganamach. Now, guys, that is the first poem, Gavin. That's the first poem on your poetry section for the Leaving Cert. Very straightforward poem, but it's important if you want to get your H1 and the top marks that we get through this as efficiently as possible. So, let's get started. Gavin. The title of this poem, well, it means imprisonment, okay? It means imprisonment, which is important for this poem because, well, that's what it's all about. You've got a line and he's stuck. He's stuck in a cell. He's stuck in the zoo, as we all know. And well, to be honest with you, with this particular poem, we've got two readings. We've got the literal meaning and we've got the metaphorical meaning. So let's get started on the first reading. So, on Heid Leiv. Guys, remember, whenever you have the first, you always, 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 no exceptions, have to have the Shevu or the H in there. That is the most important and one of the most, m many mistakes that happen here in the Irish language, it's this. So when you're writing down the first, on Heid, okay? On Heid. And as well as that, the word that comes after it, always takes a H as well, but luckily we know L can't take a H, but anything else will have that in there. So, the first reading. Shot down for envy. Okay, so this is a poem all about an animal. And on the first reading, we, we know it's an animal. He's talking about his fame and his mane and his roar. That's all in the poem. That's all within the poem. But on Heid Leif, so we're talking about the animal and his shan, Nosna. Okay? Shan Nosna. What he used to do. Okay? So the first two verses talk about, well, the nostalgia of this animal when he was in the wild. Nachokrasa. When he was in the wild and he was running free and not a care in the world. Okay? Here's a phrase for you here. Vian Anvisha. Okay? Vian Anvisha. Air. A. Harvin silt. Vian Anvisha era Harvin silt. He was just as happy as can be, okay? That's another word for Erwinimuke. We all know that. Well, this is a more advanced term for that particular feeling, okay? So the first two verses talk about how happy the animal is and just all these beautiful images that the poet is painting for us. So, Nahivana. That's your images there. Okay, Nahivana, super important when we're talking about poetry. We'll get back into that, but let's go through the poem as a whole first, okay? So the second two, uh, the first rather, the first two verses talk about the happiness, but then the contrast happens on Kudersnacht, okay? Kudersnacht. This will all be in your notes, guys, so don't worry too much about it. On Kudersnacht is the differences of the contrast. The, the Kudersnacht happens in the second uh, last verses, okay? The animal changes. He's not happy anymore. He's talking about his actual life now, stuck in a zoo. He's stuck in a zoo. He's not free. He's, instead of watching many trees and meandering away, he sees one lonely tree. He's given up on life. The animal was depressed. A word not commonly written here. Depressed. Okay? The animal was depressed. These are all terms that you should be using in your answers. These are the terms that you won't find in any textbook. These are the terms that, you know, they try and make things more simple, but no. What the examiner wants is you to go above and beyond. These are H1. 
These are your H1 phrases here, okay? These are what they look like, okay? Make sure that everything is spelled correctly, okay? We've got a havin silt. There's a H there. I didn't put that in for fun. I put that in there for a reason, which we'll be going over in later classes. This is an adiocht halavoch, or the possessive adjective. Something that you should all know. A plus H when it's a male. And this line is a male, okay? This line is a male. Ahavian silt. Nahiyavana images, okay? When you're talking about one image, it's Eva. Eva is Buninchkenoch, okay, which means it's feminine, which also means the noun that comes after it takes a H as well, okay? You're going to see many of examples. If you look at your notes, you'll see many examples in there when it comes to the different images, okay? So that's where we're going at. Making sure that we don't put in these silly mistakes that is there a H, is there not a H? Don't guess. No, there is a H there or there's not a H there. It's all in your notes. Practicing Irish and going through everything that you need to go through, well, that's most important. You have your notes in front of you. These are perfect. There's no grammatical errors in these. Don't guess them. If you're not 100% sure, will you have the whole year now to practice your answers? Making sure that when you're answering these questions from your exam papers that you're using the notes. Don't guess. Don't guess anything. Just make sure that everything in there is perfect, okay? So let's keep going. A few more words that we need to look at when we're talking about Gavin Le Kathleen Maud is these two. Searsha and Deersha. These two guys, Searsha and Deersha, which is kind of lucky for us because, well, they sound similar. They're spelt quite similar, just two uh, letters in the difference, and they're the themes of the poem. Searsha, freedom. Deersha, captivity. And when talking about this particular poem, Gavin Le Kathleen Maud, well, that's exactly what's going on. This poem is split in two halves. The first two verses and the second two verses. The first two verses talk about the freedom. Searsha on Anvi. Okay? Searsha on Anvi. Let's keep going. Let's maybe walk it over here. Searsha on Anvi. Now you might be asking, sorry, but Anvi takes a T before on. You'd be right if it was isolated by itself. On Tanvi. But we have Sirsha in front of it. Let's stick an E in there. We've got Sirsha in front of it. It loses its T because of the Tishal Ginaduk, okay? The Tishal Ginaduk. I think it's great people will learn their well, if it's feminine or if it's masculine, you know what changes happen. Bon inch the word will take a shavu or a h if it's a consonant. But if it's not, it'll take a t. You're absolutely correct, okay? These changes do happen, but the Tishal Ginaduk is one of those rules. Well, for me, I personally love it, but it, for you guys, maybe not so much. But it changes things, okay? Irish is... It's a little bit complex, it's a little bit moody, okay? It's a, just a small bit moody, so we need to make sure that when we know a word, that's fine, that's in on tishl anamnuch, okay? That's standalone, but if you put different things into it, it's gonna change. So that's the change that happens. Sirsha on anvi. So now that means whenever you're writing an essay, especially about Gavin, you're gonna be using this. There's no, no answer in the world that you will not use this particular phrase. So make sure it's right. Sirsha on Anvi. And then the same goes for Dirsha on Anvi. Okay, the same goes for Dirsha on Anvi, which Dirsha is captivity. That's what's happening in the second half of the poem. This animal, is, he's in captivity. He's depressed, he's lonely, he's, he's given up on life. And that is what this poem is all about, okay? So you've got Sirsha on Anvi and Shah, Dirsha on Anvi and Shah, okay? So Le Rohme Janish in Melga, Marshin Kadatashiv, Kunavahig Shkriv, Iwar Vragri Erfad. 
Musculator tema on dersha. Sadarala den dan sha. Now, kadis musculator on. Fech. Musculator. Learn that. Learn that particular word. You're going to be using that not only for your poetry question, not only for your prose question, but for all your questions, for all your answers. You can use this. What it means is to be brought up or conveyed or portrayed. Okay? So whenever you want to use these type of words, muscleter, okay? It is brought up, it is it has come to life. Okay? It has come to life. Even when you're talking about your oral, you could use this, okay? Muscleter dua on sport on them, okay? So that would be, if you're talking about how you like sport, this love of sport was brought up upon me. Okay? Different ideas like that. It's all about recycling terminology, okay? There's no point in learning only vocab for Gavin, only vocab for Kolskara, only vocab for Ushina Dirna Nog, one of your pros, and only using them for those. Recycle, work smart and work harder. That's how it is, okay? Just put everything together and you'll have a, a whole paper, okay? You'll have a whole paper. So, I Naven. Okay, I, father there, and I Naven. We're talking about the title of the poem here, I Naven, you are in, capti in captivity here. So, Tan Antanvi I Naven. The animal, on tanvi, tashe ingaven. Okay, so these are the different things that we can use. Okay, so ta on tanvi ingaven, you're recycling the title of the poem in your answer. Okay, that's quite attractive for any examiner looking at these type of things. Okay, they're looking at are you using the words that are given to you? Okay, that's exactly what you need to do. So use everything that you need to do. Okay, now. So we now know that the first half of the poem is talking about how this animal was roaming free, okay? Roaming free. Let's give a nice word for this, okay? So, frolicking, egg, pokerucht. Wie an tan wie egg pokerucht, sne chokrasse. Chokrasse, in the wilderness, it's, it's in the poem. And you're going to have that poem in front of you as well in the day of the exam. Question 3a, that's yours, okay? You're going to have it all, so you don't have to learn any quotes off by heart. You just need to know what the poem means so you can include your quotes in there, okay? Egg pokerucht, frolicking. Egg pokerucht and frolicking, okay? You can use all these words all over the place. So, if you look at your notes, you're going to see that there's a, a brief summary of this poem. But they don't want a brief summary, they want an advanced analysis on this particular poem, which, look down, it's all there for you. So, Tanis mon a scheloan on nincent egun villis adan sha. Schele an anvi, agus schele an denra. What are we talking about here? Let's go back to what we talked about at the very start of this lesson that there was two readings. On heed leiv, this is all about the animal. And on Dara Lev, okay? So on Dara Lev, you know what? We can stick this up here. On Dara Lev. The second reading, okay? The second reading. What's the second reading about? Well, it's a metaphor. So before we go anywhere, let's get metaphor. Maffer in Irish. Is maffer a on don sha? It's all in your notes. It's all in your note guides. Is maffer a on don sha? This poem is a metaphor. What is it a metaphor of? Now, a big mistake, and you guys might be part of this group as well, but going through the years and reading students' answers on this particular poem, Gavin Le Kathleen Maud. Well, the second reading is all about how the poet has had cancer and it's, this, it's a metaphor about that. Well, in fact, it, it mentions it nowhere. 
That is a, an educated guess someone did in some other place and it's flown through the system for some reason. That's not it at all. That is not it at all and that's important to know, okay? So if you're going in saying that this poem has a metaphor and this metaphor is about how the poet has had cancer and that she died and she was imprisoned, well, that's a way of looking at it, but that's not what it's all about. It's in fact about the wholeness of the human race, okay? So in the second reading, or if you want, let's get this word in. Diving deeper, okay? Diving deeper. That's a, a phrase that we can use, devneter, okay? So devneter, that's in the servery here, okay? So there's not anyone particularly doing this verb, but it's still happening, okay? It's still happening. So upon diving deeper into this poem, well, you can see that there's a, there's a whole lot of things going on. It's talking about someone who's physically ill, someone who's mentally ill. They're looking back on the days when they were well, when they didn't have any health issues. So that's the first two verses. The line, if we can go back, talks about how he was enjoying his life in the wilderness. Well, put that with someone else, someone who's sick. If you were ever sick, if you ever had a sore throat and you couldn't eat anything, how many times did you think about, oh, I'll never put it for granted again that eating or drinking something without your throat hurting? That's what it is. You've just done it. The metaphor for this poem. If you have a blocked nose, I'll never put it for granted whenever I could breathe clearly through my nose. Well, that's the same thing happening here, but a little bit more serious. People with illnesses that are way, way more serious. This is their thinking about the times when they were better when they weren't sick. And that's what the two, first two verses of this poem is talking about. And then the second two, well, they're sick. They can't do anything about it. If we look at the last verse, it says the line, many people come and visit me. Thagan naketa dini hugum quilala. Many people, hundreds of people come and come to me every day. They do anything for me. That last verse there, it's, it's exactly what happens in your everyday life for anyone who's sick. You get visitors. People will come to you and they will wish you well. They'll do anything for you. They'll get you a cup of tea. They'll, they'll do whatever. They'll do your washing. They might even, if you're stuck at home out of school, they might even give you your notes. But they can't do the one thing that you want them to do and that's make you better. And that's what this poem is all about, okay? That's what this poem is all about. Now, if we look here, let's move it over to this whiteboard for just two seconds and we can give in a few more little bits and bobs at that, okay? Now, we're looking over here and we're gonna be putting a few more advanced and more developed points into play when it comes to this poem on Gavin Le Kathleen Maud. Now, as we discussed earlier on, this is a metaphor. Now, is mafer on Don Shaw, the Michlant and the Drochlant dinner is elahed marshinde. So, if we look at here, mafer, okay, mafer is metaphor, okay, as we discussed earlier on, and is mafer. This is. A metaphor. So mafer and then is mafer a on tanvi. Okay, so the animal in this particular poem, Gavin Le Catherine Mod, is a metaphor. So the animal itself is the metaphor. And what is it a metaphor of? Well, the roch lante dinner. Okay, now, do, we get a shavu here as well. This goes back to the a and the adiocht halavoch, okay? So this is the adiocht halavoch, do takes the h there. Again, this is something you'll learn in first year, but for some reason, forget about it all the way up until a few months before the leave insert, where you're like, oh my God, why does that happen? This is why, do will always take a h, end of, okay? 
that's just what it is. It's the adiok talavach. We'll be going over that in future classes, but for now, this is what it is, okay? So we're looking at this. Now, good positive word here. Farir. Farir means unfortunately. You'll find that in your notes. Farir can be used in absolutely everything. Once again, your poetry section, your prose section, your even your essay section, even in your oral, okay? Even in your oral, if someone asks you something about, I don't know, it could be the politics in Ireland today. Well, unfortunately, I don't know much about it. Farir, nil moron de sima agam sahavar shin, okay? So it's nice ways of putting in things. Again, you're recycling. You know this for your poetry section, you know it for your prose section, you know it for your essay, and you know it for your oral as well. One word fits all, okay? So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to incorporate different vocabulary to fit in absolutely everywhere, okay? So let's keep that in mind. Now, a few more points here and then we'll look into the themes and the emotions of the poem. So, for rear, we'll put a comma in there, unfortunately. Kailach, mod, the Alsha. Okay, so unfortunately, we lost mod or Kathleen mod to cancer. It's not disrespectful for me to use her second name because in Irish, that's how we do things, okay? That's how we do things in Irish. We are perfectly in, in lines with manners by using someone's second name to refer to them, okay? It's not a nickname, but we can do that. We'll be using that throughout all the different poetry sections and all the different prose sections as well. We can use their surname as a reference to them, okay? So, Maud. Or, for example, from across Idrilubini, we can call Nula Nihonal just Nihonal, okay? So that's okay to use. And it shows a little bit of, you know, a bit of knowledge about the Irish language as a whole rather than just what you'd learn in class. This is, if you were in Ireland many years ago, this would be okay to do. So it's still okay to do in this day and age, okay? So Kailach Maud the Alja, she was lost to cancer, unfortunately. I have this point in here because, well, everyone talks about it and will stick in Kailach Mad Alshan in your notes. You'll see Tasha Dakar. It's hard. Gan Sha and Naska. Leshandan. Okay? And Naska to link. Okay? Naska is to link. So even though this poem isn't about how Kathleen Maud had cancer and she died, unfortunately, to it, it's still, it's hard not to link it with it, okay? So it's not what it's about, and that's what's important here. This is about anyone and everyone, whether it's a physical or a mental illness that people are suffering from, this is what this poem is a metaphor for. Not only that the Kathleen Maud had cancer, it's not her sickness, but it's everyone's sickness as a whole. It's good if you wanted to include that in as a point, but it's not what the whole poem is about, okay? Referring to this point still, okay? And I'm using the word refer. Tagrian. Tagrian. This means refer, okay? This means refer. If you look in your notes, you'll see a point that says, Tigter nach tagrian on don the hinnis on ille, ach an anio an shin tashi dacher an nask a yultu. What that means is we understand that this poem doesn't refer to her sickness as a poet, but it's still hard not to link it, okay? So that's a point there. If you want to include that, which you should, this is the word that you'd use, tagrian, okay? To refer, okay? So let's stick this in here, to refer, okay? To refer. So you've got all these points. You have these notes in front of you guys, okay? So this is just kind of going through the, the main bullet points of what we need to be getting through in our answers, okay? So let's move on. Let's move on to the themes of this poem, okay? The themes of this poem we already discussed was Sirsha and Dirsha, okay? Now, the themes of this poem or Taimi on Don. Super important here, guys. That I isn't there by mistake. That I is there on purpose. We referred earlier on to the Tishal Ginaduk. Well, this is Don in the Tishal Ginaduk. We've got the I in there for a reason. 
If you have anything coming before Don, that could be Tammy and Don, or even Eva and Don, the I is there. The I is always there. When there's something coming before it, if it's just on Don, well, then you take out the I and it's D A F A D E N. Okay? That's super important as well. Simple marks. But if it's not in there, it's going to put a terrible taste in the examiner's mouth, being like, well, they don't even know the Tishal Ginnaduk, something you should know. But don't worry about it. We'll get through it. It's quite simple when it's explained properly, which I will be doing. The themes of this poem, we already talked about them. Sirsha. August Dirsha. Now, I don't have a separate spare pair of notes for the themes because, well, that's, that's nonsense. The notes you have earlier on in your summary or your developed points, well, they discuss the themes, okay? They discuss how these themes are represented or how they're conveyed. That's exactly what we're doing here. So instead of having separate notes for the theme, having separate notes for the, maybe the emotions or the mohukhan, use the same notes, they are doing the same thing. This poem represents the themes and it represents the emotions and it represents the imagery with the same words that it has in itself, okay? So it's not gonna be using different terminology and different uh, points to just, just, just discover different things. Well, it's gonna use the same points, okay? For example, we've got Sirsha and Dirsha here. Sirsha is freedom. And that's portrayed in the first two verses. Okay, so how do we put that in a nice way? Taif Sheeter. And Sirsha. Sihedla. Jendan. Notice there's no I here because it's not in the Tishl Ginnaduk, it's just straight, okay? Type sheet term. This is a word you're going to use throughout. This is a, you, a word used at third level, okay? This is what you'd be using if you're doing a degree in Irish or a master's in Irish. This is the type of words it means to convey, okay? It means to convey. We can also use this word. Dial. Reiter and Dirsha Se Darala Dan Don and Dial Reiter is to convey. So we've got Taif Shiter and Dial Reiter to convey and portray. These are excellent words that you should be using. In your, in your essays. They're simple words. You'd use them in English. Why not use them in Irish, okay? You're at the age now where your vocab should be up here, okay? Taif Shutir and Dial Reiter on Dirsha or on Sirsha Sihedla Den Don. Okay, so these are your themes. Let's talk about your themes now, okay? So the themes of this poem. So Isid Sirsha August Dirsha Naprev Hemi Sadan Sha. Okay, the prevemi, the main themes. Okay, it's all in your notes, guys. It's all in your notes. So you can say Taifshita on Sirsha, Sikhaid Latin Don, August Dialritar on Dirsha, Sadarala Den Don. Okay, so the, in the first half, it's all about freedom and, and happiness and all this, and the Dirsha is where it kind of takes a turn for the worse, and we talk about captivity and we talk about the loss of freedom. We've already gone through why that happens and how it's explained in the poem. We've already gone through that in the points previous to this. So there's no need. You just need to know how to interact with the, the terminologies of themes and Sirsha and Dirsha, okay? So which is what we have here, okay? So when we talk about the themes, we can also talk about the Ivana. Okay, which we looked at earlier on and we talked about how Eva is a word that is one inch genoch or feminine. Okay, so Tuggan and Phila Eva Vronoch Eva Vronoch Okay, 
Eva is a feminine word. That means that the word that comes after it must take a H. Okay, it must take a H, no matter what it is. We can stick in another word here, Eva. Shua. Veiloch. There's your H again. Eva Hrua Veiloch. Eva Hrua Veiloch. Eva Hrua Veiloch. Well, what true Veiloch means as itself, but it's just kind of like a bit, you know, sad. It's kind of a similar word to Bronoch, but true Veiloch is kind of like just sad and just, oh, that's not very good. You know, it's just not a very nice image or anything like that. So the themes can be displayed or conveyed, type sheeter or dialreiter through these images as well. Okay, so how are these images represented? It's in your notes, guys, it's in your notes. The first, the, the first uh, half of the poem, it's all happiness and seersha. Use your words, use your, your, uh, your use the poem that's in front of you on the day to incorporate the different lines, okay? Incorporate the different lines. You can also put it here. Lairiter on seersha. Se Lena Anvi Alta. Okay? So that's your quote there. That's your quote. Lerita and Sirsha, Selena, Anvi Alta. A lot of people ask me, how do you incorporate quotes in these answers? In English it's a lot more straightforward because well you speak English as your first language. In Irish, this is how you're going to do it. Lairiter and Sirsha, Selena, and whatever it is. So Lairiter, it is shown in the lines, and this is what, what is shown, the freedom, or on Sirsha is shown in the lines, Anvi, Alta. Okay? You could change that up to Lairiter and Dirsha, so the captivity is shown in the lines, and then you decide what line you want. Achanish Liam Shias would be a good one for that one, okay? So that's your poems, okay? That's your themes and that's everything that goes on with it. In your notes you're gonna find Tantanvi Alurug Rudawan Sasail. August is a shit on Sirsha. In Peter Dun on the Hivana Atakrohia, a gun villa guilche teen tershach da hail, okay? So these are all in your eyes. Every single thing that you have here, you can use that. This is all under the themes of the poem which is what you can use. If you have any questions, we're gonna have those live Q&A sessions where you can get onto me and we can go through them if there's something that you're not grasping from the notes, but it's all there. This is what we're going through, okay? So now let's go through the emotions of the poem, okay? So we're gonna move over now here and do the emotions. Right now, the emotions are Mohukhan and Don. Again, guys, the I is in Don for a reason. To Tishl Ginnaduch, okay? So, there's two main emotions. There's Tagha, Freev, Vuhuchan, Agun, Sedan, Sha. Is Eid, Broad, Agus Kua. The Preev, Vuhuchan. Sedan. Now, is Eid. This is the plural, okay? This is a plural because we have two main emotions in this particular poem. We've got brod, which is pride, and kua, which is sorrow. Now you could say brown, which that's very junior cycle esque. Kua, sorrow. This is where the marks are going to come into when we're using more elaborate vocabulary, okay? So we've got pride and we've got sorrow. So because we've got two main emotions here, we have to use id, okay? It's not is a broad, August kua, because that means one. We've got two. So this is what we use for plural, okay? That's important, okay? This is what we would use for the plural. So is id broad, August kua, na priv, vuhukhan. Sedan Sha, compound words in Irish. The second one would usually take a shavu, okay? So, Mohuchan, no H, but in the Preve, Vuhuchan takes a H there, okay? Simple things, but these are the things that are going to make your answer look better 
than everyone else's. Okay, so Isid Broad August Kua the Priv Vuhan Sedan. Okay, simple again. Broad. It's in the first half. First half. Kua in the second half. Now Again, there's not loads of different notes because we can sense the pride from the notes that we've already have. We can sense the sorrow from the notes that we already have. So why put together a whole new section of notes, more things to learn off, just building and building and building on top of your work when you don't have to do that? You know, work smarter and use the work that we already have, use the points that we already have to fulfill this answer, okay? So is it broad August cool and prev vogan sedan? Fector, which we had earlier, it is shown or taif sheeter or dial reiter broad sikedla. This is all things we already have and then le reiter or dial reiter kua sedarala. Again, why bring new things in when you can just recycle things which is completely fine. You're not overusing anything this is just how you would answer things, okay? So Broad is in the first half and Kua is in the second half. Now, look at this. Is Fader a Haulu? You can imagine. Is Fader a Haulu? Again, this is all in your notes. Is Fader a Haulu? You can imagine. That's something that you can use all over the place. You can imagine. That's so versatile, you can use it absolutely anywhere in your paper. Is Fedra Haulu on sale at Egan Anvi, Tishk Nahivana at Krohia, August Kurha Osargor Egan Villa? Okay, so is Fedra Haulu. Let's put this one in. Tishk. Because of Tishk. So you can imagine these images because of Tishk how the poet has excellently portrayed it in words, okay? Tishk is a great one to have in. Tishk, T-O-I-S-C. It's a great one to have in because of. So if you ever want to put in um, uh, Tishk Gwil Meitin or Tishk Gwil, whatever, that's the word you'd use. It's not Mar Gwil or something like that. If you translate something directly from English into Irish, it's usually wrong, okay? Irish is a completely separate language to English. So we have our own words to, we don't need to borrow anything from the English. We have our own words to describe whatever we need to know, okay? Here's a good one for you. It's again, it's in your notes, okay? Ta and tanvi brishta go moralach, okay? Go moralach. Moralach here, right? Okay, so morally or, you know, completely just broken. It's completely broken. This animal is completely broken. Okay, so there's no fixing it. There's no fixing it here. As well as that in your notes, you'll see Tigan she knuckles sirsha er faldo. He understands that freedom is no longer an option. Tashi in a lee, agsnil simmer bi ege in einwood. He's just lying there. It says that in the poem. Achnish. Liam Shias. So this animal knows that freedom is no longer in the running. There is, there is no such thing as it anymore, which can, can be compared or uh, contrasted to the metaphorical meaning of this poem with someone who's sick, someone who has a terminal illness, well, they know that freedom is no longer an option for them. And this, again, is what this poem is all about. So this here, these are the emotions, okay? In your questions, it could be asking, what are the main emotions in this poem? Well, bro, dogs, kua, and it'll ask you to describe them. Now, a lot of people think that you have to write reams and reams and reams of paper and notes for your answers. You don't. A standard and uh, correct poetry answer, including all the three questions, would maybe be about a page and a half A4, okay? So that's what you're looking at there. There's no need to kind of continuing on, you know, you only need about three points or four points in your first one and the second one they'll tell you is lower point to a one. One point is necessary. And then the third question is a guarantee 
all the time, which we will move on to now, okay? So the third question here, guys, is all about the poet, okay? It's all about the poet. It'll ask you, give a few points about the poet, and also, as well as that, mention some other works that she did. So let's move on to that question now. Now, when answering the, the poetry question, you're always gonna be asked about the poet themselves, okay? So, unfortunately, you have to learn this off by heart. This is something that you're just gonna to have to know. Everything about the poet, okay? So, you don't need to go about their whole life story. It's just a few points, okay? So, it's just a few points. So, let's go with Kathleen Maud, okay? So, that's the first one, Kathleen Maud. Rugoch. Kathleen Maud. A Ross Muck. Okay, she was born in Ross Muck, a Gundana Galava, okay, in County Galway. You'll have this all in your notes. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have one sheet of paper with all the poets that you need to know and all the bits that you have to know about them, okay? It's really about three sentences, okay? So, it's nothing to worry about. Um, Vishi Marvuntor. I guess Scrive she on drama on Lasser Hulle. Okay, so they're always going to ask you those things. They're always going to ask you, they're always going to ask you this type of a question, and you can always where she's from, what did the person do, and maybe another piece of work. You have to include another piece of work that they have done, okay? So this one is on Lasser Chulle. Some of you might recognize that it is on the course. We won't be doing it in this particular one, but it is on the course all the same. So she was born in Ras Moch, a Gundayna Galava. She was a teacher once, and she also wrote the play on Lasser Chulle. That's all you need to know. That's all they're looking for in the exam. You don't need to give them pages and pages about her life story, what she ate for breakfast, what she had for dinner. This is all you need to do, okay? This is all you need to know. So we've now come to the end of Gavin Le Kathleen Mod. So let's do a quick recap on kind of everything that we've done. So Gavin Le Kathleen Mod, it's two readings. You've got the literal and you've got the metaphorical. Sichaid Leiv. In the first reading, we read all about an animal and how he's nostalgic about his time in the wilderness. Vishay Eg Pokerucht, he was frolicking through the wilderness. He was happy out. But then in the second half of the poem, well, he's not so happy. He's brought back to reality. Tashe Ingaven, Tashe Ibrizun, Tashe Sanihe Igas. Okay, these are all in your notes. Don't worry about it. Tashe Sanihe Igas, he's trapped in a cage. It's trapped in a cage. Now, that's the first reading. In the second reading of the poem, it's a bit more metaphorical. It's mafer eon don Okay? It's mafer eon don It's a metaphor. What this metaphor is talking about is that someone who's sick, whether physical or, or mentally ill, it's about they're sick, they're trapped in their own illness, and they're thinking back in the time where they were not sick. Okay, so this is type of the thing that we're talking about. We've got all these different words that we're using. We've got dalrether, type sheeter. This is portray and convey. Okay, we were talking as well about the eyes in Don, where it's in the Tishal Ginneduk. We were talking about the a ah for the adiok talavoch. This line is considered a man, so when we use a, ah, the following word will take a h. Okay, these things are very very important and guys remember these are all in your notes if you have any questions whatsoever send them in and we can answer them in the live q a sessions here okay guys thank you very much we're going to continue on with cold thank you